I like to play in the dirt. How about you? Hello. Well, this is the fall garden update, I think part five. And these little peas sitting here on the table, the seed starts, you might remember. This is day 21. It is definitely time to get these planted out in the garden. So, oh yeah. Well, I need to show you first how we prep the buckets. So let's rewind to that. Hey gardeners, well we're out here in the garden and I want to show you two ways uh, that you can go about filling up uh, your buckets on the rain gutter garden system. This first way is a way where you actually let your bucket sit for two or three days and do the wicking action kind of slowly on its own. And then the second way I'm going to show you is the quicker way where you can actually plant a little bit faster. With both methods, the first thing you need to do is put some of your mix in a bucket and you want to saturate it until it is a sloppy wet mix. Okay, I have a sloppy wet mix. I have my bucket. It is lined with the landscape fabric. So you fill your net cup like an ice cream cone and I put my landscape fabric down in there and I'm poking it down. Now it's extending between the two boards I have here. Now I'm going to take some of this sloppy wet mix and dump it into the bucket about an inch or two. This is going to hold down your landscape fabric and it's also going to help start the capillary action. With this method you're going to lightly soak, lightly wet, lightly dampen your dry mix here. You want it to be slightly damp, kind of like you would find in potting soil, in a fresh bag of potting soil. All right, now I'm gonna fill it up a third of the way, and I am gonna give this a good squirt of water. I will fill it all the rest of the way up with this dampened mix and I won't be wetting it anymore. I will let the wicking action begin because I will be sticking this bucket directly on the gutter that has water in it. Packing it down a little bit because this will settle and I will fill it all the way to the top. Why do this? Well, one of the reasons you can do it this way, or the reason to do it this way, is to keep your dirt out of your gutter. Because the other way that I'm going to show you that we do it, you do have to be pretty careful so that you don't get a lot of this potting mix down in your gutter because not only does it make it dirty, but as I've been told, it makes it anaerobic. So that's not a good thing. Even with this method, you can see that dirt still does get in the gutter. Okay, here's method number two. This is the way we do it most of the time. With this first method, remember, you're gonna have to let this sit two or three days to give it time to, for, the, for it to wick. Here is method number two, the one we use. Again, you have your sloppy wet mix. Fill the neck cup like an ice cream cone. Put your fabric down there. We got the bucket right on the gutter. I don't like to lift heavy stuff, so this is my preferred method. I'm gonna carefully Put my mix down in my bucket again. Now, this is dry mix. So 
I'm going to fill it up a third of the way. I'm going to saturate this. I'm going to saturate it until I see water coming out the bottom drainage hole. I'm filling it up again with another third. Water it in. See with this method until it's all the way full. And leave it be. Tomorrow, I'll come out here and check to make sure it's ready to plant. And I'll show you that when, when it's time to plant. All right, now you've seen us prep those buckets a few days ago. So let's get them planted. Come along with me. Well, we're out here in one of our garden beds. This entire bed is going to be for peas, garden peas and um, snow peas. And obviously peas are climbers. So that's why I've chosen this bed because all three of these gutters have our handy dandy trellises. And something to mention about these trellises, I had a friend of mine ask me, well, those are metal, won't they? burn the vines. Interestingly enough, this is the heat of the day, which really is not a great time to be planting. I should have gotten out here early this morning, but they are not hot. This is not hot. This is not hot. It never gets hot. So it worked fantastically for all our spring climbers and it will work great for the fall ones too. So step one, if you remember back in part one of the fall garden series, I introduced my book and my method of recording and I sh showed you how I lay out my beds. But I brought it out here to show you I need to reference this so that I plant my plants exactly where I had them planned. I'll get a little closer see if you can. Alright, so you have an idea of what I'm going to plant where. So if you come a little bit closer, I'll show you how we actually are going to plant in the buckets. As I talked about in the first um, part one series, in my peas, I have figured four peas per five gallon bucket, which is what I have here. These are already quite long, so they're really getting close to reaching the trellis, which is great. But basically, you notice we're down about inch, inch and a half. So all I'm gonna do Carefully remove the pea from the bucket. Look at those beautiful roots. Nothing is root bound. Scoop it down in there. Firm up the dirt around it. By the way, I forgot to mention the finger test. When you stick your finger down in the soil, you should feel some moisture. If it's dry, then it's not wicking correctly, and you need to go back and water your buckets really well and wait for another couple of days to make sure that the wicking action has started. But I feel good moisture. It's not soppy wet, but it is moist. Push it down in there. One other thing I wanted to mention, I had a few pea seeds that did not sprout and I could have replanted them, I just never got around to it. So in those buckets where I only have three, I will go ahead and add a couple of seeds to uh, see if I can get at least one more to germinate so that I will have uh, four per basket. Now let's talk about fertilizer for peas. Peas are a legume. So it's the same thing with all legumes. Very similar to green beans as well. Did I mention that it's hot? If I didn't mention it was hot, it's hot out here. It's so hot out here that the iPad that I'm filming with quit working. Uh, had a temperature gauge on it so I had to take it inside while I finished planting these peas but I think I was about to discuss or in the middle of discussing fertilizer for peas. Peas are a legume. 
like beans, they are really good foragers for the nutrients that they need. One of the nutrients that they do not need so much of is nitrogen because they are in a class of plants that is commonly called nitrogen fixers. Interjecting here, I'm sorry if it's windy. Hopefully it's not too hard for you to hear, but it sure feels good out here in this heat. Anyway, moving on. You might know that when you do in-ground planting, a lot of times peas or beans, for example, are planted with crops that use up a lot of nitrogen. And that is because it is said that these beans are nitrogen fixers. They take the nitrogen gas out of the air, convert it to something a plant can use, and supposedly return it to the soil. That's why you see things like Three Sisters Guilds uh, that the Indians came up with where you plant corn and then you plant climbing beans around it that will climb up the stalk because corn is a high nitrogen user. Uh, crops like tomatoes and beets and cabbages and broccoli. A lot of times they will tell you when you're doing in-ground planting that the next season to plant beans in their place or peas even as cover crops let's say you only do a spring crop well you might overwinter a crop that is feeds on a lot of nitrogen with something like beans or peas we don't have to worry about that with the rggs system planting in buckets we don't have to worry about rotation but we do need to worry about fertilizer because peas are good foragers, and I have amended this soil with the proper amount of a really quality mushroom compost, I'm not really, really concerned about adding a lot of fertilizer to the peas. If I do add fertilizer, it will be after the first crop of peas produces, after I get the first pods, then I will add some fertilizer, but not high in nitrogen. You want something like a five, 10, 10. They love phosphorus and potassium, but if you put a lot of nitrogen on peas, legumes, beans, you're gonna get great green foliage and nothing to harvest. So, let's take a look at what we've gotten planted. So all of our peas are now planted. The other thing that uh, I didn't mention was watering. After these were planted, they were hand watered from the top giving them a really good drench of water.